Hello and welcome to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we're talking about something that's super common in the commercial kitchen equipment industry, and that's float switches. So if you've got a piece of equipment and you need to control a water level, or really any liquid level in it, you've got to have some kind of sensor that you can tie back to your control so that the control knows how much water is in that system. So whether it's an ice machine, or a coffee brewer, or a dish machine, you're going to have some kind of float switch. The reason I've got three different switches here is because they all three work the same way. And they all have a very small semiconductor inside that lets them sense a magnetic field. So we have that small semiconductor device, and then we have a magnet. And the movement of the magnet in relation to that switch opens and closes a circuit. So in our first example here, the ice machine float, the actual float sits down inside underneath, and in service, as that water level rises and falls, the float moves up and down. So what that looks like, the water level rises, and the float rises with it. And the actual magnet is down inside. You can see it just, it's that dark spot down inside. And then our sensor is down here. In this example you can see pretty clearly where the magnets are, but in this example it's all sealed up and this one will have to cut apart. But you can see, you can just sort of see the magnet sitting right here and as it swings up against can actually hear it actuate. This one is interesting too in that it also has a thermocouple inside it for sensing temperature. So we'll take a look at that as well. Now the old design, prior to us having the, the magnetic sensors, the Hall effect sensors, was to use very very small metal plates inside a sealed tube and they would actually physically come together when the magnet got close to them. You'll still occasionally see those out in the field. They're not super common anymore, but they are still around. But to demonstrate here real quick, I've got a multimeter. And we've got it set on continuity. So when we have continuity, you'll hear it beep. So if we take our two leads from our coffee brewer float, you can hear that when the float is in the up position, we have continuity. When it's in the down position, we don't. So it's pretty straightforward. So the first one we'll take apart here is the, the coffee float. You can see these are pretty simple, pretty straightforward to disassemble, largely because they, they need to be able to be cleaned. And now you can see that the actual sensor itself is epoxied into this hollow space. So if we try and get it out, we'll probably destroy it. But you can see that it is down inside there, and then they fill that back in with epoxy. So it senses that magnetic field through the epoxy. Our second example here, the, the ice maker float, we may, may be able to actually pull the sensor out. You can see it's got this small plug uh, so in this case they have again epoxied that down in and it's very critical that it stay in the, the correct spot in a float switch so that's why they do this epoxy business. But let's move on to our last one here, our float switch for a dish machine. You can once again see that they've epoxied both the thermal sensor and the magnetic sensor down inside. But this one we're actually going to try and get it further apart. So the first thing we're going to try and do is, is get this float switch off. Right, so there's our clip. There's our float. You can hear it rattling around in there. And I think what I'm going to do with this, I think I'm just going to go 
we can see roughly where we think that sensor is going to be. I think using a pipe cutter will probably destroy this. I may just take a hacksaw and go around it. So let's see what I can do here in the vise. All right, so we very carefully cut through the wall of this tubing with a hacksaw. And you can see as I'm pulling it apart what's down inside. So what I'm going to do is actually cut these wires and pull them down through. Then we'll see if we can get it further apart. And this is a failed part, so I don't know if it will even work once we get it once we get it down in there. All right, I think we we'll have to cut it a little more. May have caused some damage here. Cut through the tip of it. Started to cut a slot in it. Uh, looks like I accident. I actually have cut through just about everything that was in there. But I'm hoping that now we can at least get these things slid out of this housing. I may come back and finish this slot across the top now too. So in a total surprise to me, this thing is full of glass. Which means we still have the old style, it's called a reed switch, in here. So here's one of the two reeds. And the other one actually fell out while I was taking it apart. Here's the other reed. And these two reeds just kind of tap together when that magnet came close enough to, to influence them. I did not expect this to still have a reed switch inside it. I am genuinely surprised. The reason that there's glass in there is because moving the uh, electrical current across open air creates an arc. If you put glass around it and you fill that glass with inert gas like nitrogen or argon, that arc doesn't oxidize. It doesn't create that big black charring. The other reason in this case is probably just so the epoxy doesn't get into it. Also we ended up with two different style switches here. We ended up with the, the Hall Effect magnetic switches and a reed switch inside the dish machine float. Now let's, let's check and see real quick. Let's see what happens here if we slide the float from our ice machine over if we slide the float from our ice machine over the Yeah, interesting. What if we go the other way? Huh? Yeah, so you can see it really doesn't doesn't matter which float we use. They all three have some kind of magnet in there that's that's influencing the little Hall effect sensor inside. All right, so when we talk about principles of operation here, these are really pretty straightforward. They're using the semiconductor or the reed switch and a magnet, and then a sealed chamber with air in it. So when the liquid level rises, the floats move. They can move up and down freely. When we talk about how these things fail, the failures are, are almost always uh, either physical movement, like the, the float can't physically slide up and down anymore inside the float assembly, or it's damage to the sensing device. The, the magnets inside these don't really fail. You could potentially have a leak into the float that would let it fill with water, in which case it would sink instead of float. The other uh, failure that we see, especially with the old reed switch style, is the, the reeds burn up over time. Eventually they stop being able to conduct electricity when they close. And a, a less common but still possible failure is if you have some kind of power surge in the system, it is possible to damage the semiconductor Hall effect sensor that's inside here. With a, with a power surge. So that's a, a way these can fail as well. But overall, these are pretty rugged. They're pretty straightforward. They work very well. They work for a long time. As long as nothing jams the float from physically moving, then you're, you're probably going to get a long life out of these. All right. Thanks for watching. Hi, folks. 
My name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.